imagine this, you support a football club, they're super rich, they've got loads of money, but they're underperforming. They should be succeeding, they should be performing better, making better signings. Oh, it's Arsenal Football Club. They should be making key signings, big signings that matter. But somehow, you just know in your gut that's not going to happen. Canon Press event, that's what I'm here for today. Yeah, I didn't shoot any B-rolls to go in as a transition from that totally random, unrelated sports observation. And this, let's go. We are. Great, thank you. This is actually what we're here for. Canon bibs. Oops, Canon mugs. Not really. I came here for free food and new products. Ooh, I'm so excited to show you the new Canon EOS 200D. Here it is, two of them in fact. Moving on to the 60 Mark II. Only kidding, the 200D comes in three colours. These plus silver is an entry level DSLR with graphical user interface and five axis electronic IS. And seriously, it's not a bad camera. This replaces the 100D. It's got 24 megapixels, it's got nine AF points. Nothing special. But it's got dual pixel AF and a tilty flippy screen. This could be great for you YouTubers out there. And it's got an easy to use interface. And that's pretty much it. So let's move on to 60 Mark II. Many people feared that the cheapest full-frame Canon DSLR, the 60, announced in 2012, would not be updated. But fear not, because we have the Canon 60 Mark II right here, next to the 5D Mark IV. Why have I got next to the 5D Mark IV? Because this is basically like a baby version of this. This is apparently the world's lightest full-frame DSLR. So what's new? Look through the viewfinder and you'll see something new. Well, lots of little new things. So yes, the focus is very much on the focus. It has 45 all cross type AF points. Now the 60 before only had 11 AF points, one cross type, sensitive down to minus three EV. It's a welcome change up from the 6D, although the viewfinder seems like it only provides 98% coverage. But of course, unsurprisingly, this also has dual pixel AF. I mean, this is like Canon's MSG. It's, it's their flavor enhancer they put in everything these days. Oh, I've spotted something very rare. A Gordon. Carol Labs Gordon. So the dual pixel AF, 80% coverage. And you can use the new tilty flippy screen. Tilty flippy screen I like. This and the A99 II are the only full frame cameras with a fully tilty flippy screen. The 62 uses touch screen for focusing or for focus and taking the shot also. Okay, let's press the screen and see how long it takes for the shot to happen. But of course, that's not just for the focus, that's for focus and also taking the shot. That's touch shutter. Switch that off. And you know the focus is pretty damn quick. I've used dual pixel AF extensively and it's more reliable than some family members, that's for sure. Look at that, that's a fantastic pose. Oh! Flippy screen means you can get down low without getting down low. By the way, there's a new AF button here because it's got a new and improved AF system. They felt the need to put a button there. It's a handy button for changing focus. Didn't have it before, do now, which brings it more in line with a 5D Mark IV. Oh yes, a bit of Gordon Lane breakdancing right here. <laughs> we weren't allowed to take any sample shots. Shame, those were some amazing moves. With a Digix 7 processor helping the 60 Mark II shoot at 6.5 FPS, it's not much slower than the 7 FPS 5D4. It definitely feels a lot livelier than before. Livelier than 60, which I thought was a bit of a wet cloth. Because this has got a faster burst rate, 6.5 FPS, and that focusing system feels really good. It's a proper auto focusing system, although all those points are kind of concentrated more towards the centre. The 60 Mark II has noticeably less horizontal and also vertically AF coverage than the 5D Mark IV. I mean, that is really how they've enhanced Mark II. And also, the megapixels, they've bumped up by six more megapixels. Not really a big hike. But the body feels pretty much the same, actually. To be honest, didn't really need to change it much. 
but still only one SD card slot. It has GPS, NFC and Wi-Fi added, otherwise it's still got the lighter 6D weight, which is good, as well as that flip screen which is a massive plus for still shooters, but also for video shooters. I feel myself getting smitten with this thing, thinking that this is my ideal vlogging camera right here. I mean, it has extra stabilisation too. It has electronic image stabilisation inside the camera. Five axes that is. But the key question is, does it shoot 4K? Yes, for time lapses. The 6D Mark II shoots only 1080 60p max. Yeah, see, one thing is that I think they could have really knocked the ball out of the park with this one when it comes to video. As a vlogging camera, it's got the tilty flippy screen. 4K would have been nice, but... No, 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 no buts. 4K would have been nice. I understand that they have to differentiate between a 60 Mark II and a 5D Mark IV, and also the focus of the 60 Mark II is stills, but the convergence of photo and video features has been happening for a long time. I mean, Canon championed that with a 5D Mark II. It is a real shame. I mean, I wouldn't mind if they put a heavily cropped 4K mode in it. They just need to put a 4K mode in it to say, we can too. 4K has been available at consumer level for a long time already. The original 6D already shot 1080p. That was five years ago. I'm sure the 60 Mark II is going to be a good stills camera and the 1080 60p might be pretty good. We'll have to find out in a review. But still, it's that supporter feeling. You support the team. So it's just like when you support your football team. You want them to do well and you want them to make key summer signings. But then they don't. And that's the heartbreak and the heartache. Why? Why? <sighs> Why do they keep doing this to us? Why? Why? Tell me why! Cannon, why? Tell me why! Cannon, why? Tell me why! Oh, Cannon, why? Why? Why?